everyone, welcome back to the HubSpot Top 5, where we highlight the best and brightest HubSpot users and the super clever things they're doing with HubSpot. This is the second time we've done it. I'm so excited that we have so many submissions. Again, all of you who submitted are fantastic. There were no bad submissions, but it's the top five, so I can only choose five. And these five are incredible. So first off, in fifth place, we've got Zoya Esti, who is working with a manufacturing firm. And as part of their sales process, they send a sample to their potential client and the client reviews it and either accepts it or rejects it. If they reject it, they have to repeat that process as many times as it takes to get the sample right before they can go on to manufacturing. And Zoya solved this problem using a custom object, required deal stage properties, and some clever automation. Check this out. So what we did was we created a custom object for them that's now called samples. Um, and so here's how this process works. So when I create a deal, uh, I go through, that's we'll call this Ancora. Uh, and then it's for, so each uh, product has its own pipeline. So now with the recent update, we can move it right into customer requested samples and it'll bring up our required form, which is awesome. Um, and then we'll just use ABC template company. So as they're moving through and they're requesting multiple samples. So in this case, this is sample number one. Uh, the sample type is the production. So these are actually all of the um, required fields when something is moved into that stage. Uh, in this case, it's nice to see that when I select uh, this um, field, yep, there it goes. So if it's in a different stage, these don't come up, but if I do have it in this one. So thank you product team for making that update for us. So this would be sample one, production, select the product, the quantity, um, who it's sending to, and they have two warehouses. So which production team it's going to. Oh, one, two, three, Main Street. Sorry, this is such a long form. So all this information is collected um, when they are on the phone with a customer. And So now that I have this deal created with all that information filled out. So a couple things are happening in the background. So two things are going on at the same time. So first of all, um, all that information that I filled out in the form is being sent to two places. So it's going into a sample record. Um, so now they'll have a history of all the samples uh, with, you know, sample one, sample two, sample three, all associated back to this deal. Uh, it's also creating a, a shipping ticket. Um, so for the production teams to know which samples they're sending out, who it's going to, all the relevant information that we just filled out on that form is also going to um, a, a shipping ticket. So usually it takes a minute just for everything to populate, but here we go. So we have ABC template company, the sample, sample one, and then here's uh, the shipment one. So I can go ahead and open the sample. So here's all the information that we filled out. And then here's all the shipping information and details here. So there's some things bouncing back and forth here um, that the production team now fills out, you know, will the sample be shipped in three days, adding in their shipping notes, confirming some details. So as they fill it out in their ticket, and this is in Reno. So as they update their ticket, uh, that information is getting sent back to the deal and to the um, to the deal and to the um, sorry the sample. So as I actually move things to preparing for shipment, that's going to be the required things here. So all on track. So I can update that. Save. And then finally, um, as it goes into shipped, it could take a few days so I can put the tracking information here as well. So now a couple things are happening here as well. As this status on the ticket is being updated, that's actually sending back the signals to the deal and to the sample records to be updated as well. So I can see it's preparing for shipment um, versus in a few minutes, it should be uh, going into shipped. 
once that actually the automation catches up with everything. So essentially now they have a process of the customer either says, okay, I approve this and everything looks good. Uh, and now you can see that says shipped here with the uh, tracking information pulled in as well, or it will in just a moment. There it goes, there's a the tracking info. So everything is cross associated, which is really nice so that this, the production team has access to their information. The sales team has access to their information. Everything is kept nice and organized. And then we have um, an either in review or rejected. So if it's rejected, then that basically prompts the um, salesperson to go back to the deal. And then in this case, when they do drag the deal back to the stage, so once it's shipped, it goes sample shipped in review. So we're not gonna wait for that automation to go, but then essentially once it, the first sample has been shipped uh, or any sample that's been shipped, it goes into sample shipped in review. So when they come in, that's actually already gonna be moved over. So when they move it back, now we have this form come up. So a lot of the information is gonna stay the same. All I have to do is now select sample two. Sorry, I have this blocking my view. There we go. Now I hit next. So now once again, that's sending all the automations to create sample record number two and shipment record number two. So um, again, as the production team marks the sample shipped, it gets automatically moved into shipped in review. Uh, if they were to approve the sample, the deal is automatically moved into testing complete. And there, everybody's gonna be notified that, hey, the customer approved the sample. That does have to be manually entered by the team when they're actually on the phone with the customer saying, hey, how would you think, did it work? Um, so that goes back in here. Thanks a lot, Zoya. Love that so much. I've got to say my favorite part is when the deal moves backwards, which is a thing I never thought I would approve of, but I approve of it here because the deal moves backwards and that form of required properties pops back up and they're all pre-filled and all you have to do is increment up what sample number this is and submit it again. Then the automation takes it over. Love that so much. Chef's kiss. Well done. Moving on to the number four spot. Gabriel McCarthy is a man that if you have interacted with him even briefly on LinkedIn. You know he loves puns. Uh, he, d he does really great puns um, and has built a workflow and an email campaign all around puns. Now, if puns are not your thing, that's okay. What I really want you to zero in on here is he is looking at activities and interactions on the website and sending personalized emails using smart content based on that, which is a lesson that every HubSpot company can, can learn from. So check it out and see if you can get some inspiration for your campaigns. So as you can see here in this workflow, just to explain it really quickly, it's based upon user activities. So uh, if you exist in the CRM and you jump on any one of these pages on our Salted Stone website, whether it be the strategic uh, page, the tactical or the, proje or the project page, uh, you would then uh, trigger off this workflow two hours later to these if then branches based upon which page you went on. So if you went on the strategic, project, tactical or a combination of those pages, uh, you would then receive a follow up email which has, wait for it, a pun <laughs> that is specific to that experience you just had, um, as close to it as possible, um, to follow on the user experience. Um, but if you didn't do any of those, then you're kind of lame. So just kidding, let's move along. Uh, those follow-up puns that you would get in email would be structured as such like this, um, being that this first pun here was based on if you landed on the strategic page and no other page. Two hours later, you get this email saying, what's the most effective marketing strategy to sell audiobooks? The answer, word of mouth. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that you would receive if you landed on the strategic strategic page, but if you landed on a different page, uh, such as the uh, tactical page, the project page, or a combination of those pages, you would receive different puns, which is awesome, using the smart tools built in within HubSpot EDM modules. So say you landed on the tactical one, it would change out to the tactical pun. What do you call a tactical unit comprised of nuns? I would call that a force of habit. 
Anyway, so those are the kinds of things you could do with this particular workflow uh, to have just a little bit of fun and get your user's experience uh, ramped up a bit within this season. But look, uh, also what you can then push as a CTA below there saying, hey, you like these? You know, sign up for more and get weekly giggles going and then have a workflow built off the back of that that just sends them uh, a weekly pun or joke or whatnot. Um, and then of course other things you can then fold in there is uh, you know non pun related stuff as well so you know recent articles that we've written uh, or webinars that uh, you've hosted etc etc I um, highly recommend that under the hood one by the way uh, just as a tidbit there thanks Gabe and again if you're watching from home and you're like I'm not into puns that's okay just look at the way he was using those interactions and find ways that you can make your content more personalized like that. I think it'll drive engagement a lot. Moving on to our number three spot, we've got Chris Bryant. And I'm super excited about this one because a transformative moment for me was when I read the book Sales Acceleration Formula by Mark Roberge, who was the founder of the sales team here at HubSpot. He talks about the don't be on it dashboard, where there's this dashboard of leads that need to be worked and things, and your goal as a sales rep is just never to appear on that dashboard. If you do, it's because something's out of date and you need to update it. I've always kind of wondered, could we build this in HubSpot? What would it look like? And Chris has done essentially that. Check out this dashboard, love it so much. He doesn't call it the don't be on a dashboard, but I sure do. Take a look at the brilliance of Chris Bryant. Hi there. So one of the things that we found really difficult was reporting on um, issues with data inside the system. So a lot of times when people make dashboards, it's always looking at, you know, how many new deals were created or how much money is coming in to the account or new ops created, how many phone calls, how many emails, activities, stuff like that. One of the most useful things that we actually found was a dashboard dedicated to cleaning up bad data in the system. So some of the reports that we have on here are things that, you know, deals with close dates in the past, deals missing contacts and companies. Um, we have a couple custom records or custom fields rather that we want to make sure that those always have values inside of them. And then each one of these things here has the person's name on it. And ideally in a perfect world, this whole dashboard would show no data at all. Like you would see everything that no deals to show in this time frame or no contacts or no companies, because that means there's not currently any bad data in the system or missing data. Um, so we've made several dedicated reports just around helping us find and identify potential issues that do affect the reports like snapshotting or, you know, revenue coming in or forecasting because they're missing fields inside the system. So once a week, everyone on the sales team and marketing team kind of reviews this. And unfortunately, if your name appears on this dashboard, it does mean that there's something that you need to go fix. Some of these other reports that we have on here are simple things like identifying calls and meetings without a proper outcome set or meetings that have occurred in the past but are still set to scheduled. So this is one of the most useful dashboards that we found inside of HubSpot. Of course, we also make a couple automations to help identify deals missing contacts, companies missing contacts, contacts without companies, um, so that way the sales team can kind of jump on those things as they come in. So hope this helps somebody else out there. Thank you so much, Chris. Never thought I'd say this, but I hope your dashboard is showing no data very soon. Moving on to the number two spot, Alex Inake, who is prolific on LinkedIn and always sharing HubSpot tips, uh, has come up with a very elegant solution for tracking sales email open and clicks. And I love this because it's really simple and yet it's so powerful and it opens up so many opportunities with lead scoring and other things. Alex, take it away. Hello everyone, hope you are well, it's Alex here. In today's video, I have a quite an exciting one for companies that use a lot sales emails. And if you use sales emails, you probably notice that HubSpot doesn't track natively the number of sales email clicks or opens as it happens with marketing emails, for example. I struggled with this quite a bit because when you build lead scoring models, you probably want to include this type of criteria, but at the moment it's not an option but you can actually do something custom that's actually quite simple to monitor these insights. So what you want to do first, you want to create two uh, custom number of properties called number of sales email clicks or number of sales email opens. And then what you need to do, you need to build two workflows. 
based on the recent sales email open date is known and very, very importantly, make sure that you allow re-enrollment for this workflow. And then what you want to do, you want to increase that custom property we created before number of sales email opens by one. Exactly the same logic if you want to track number of clicks. When the recent sales email click date is known and make sure you allow re-enrollment, you want to increase number of sales email clicks, the custom property we created before by one. And just to show you an example, I can't show you the actual content here, but what I've done, I've sent two emails to this contact and they've opened the emails twice and then uh, clicked four times on the emails as well. So you can see here, uh, everything was uh, worked properly. Um, and again, I don't know if I'm overly excited about this, but I think this is really cool. If you want to include in your lead scoring model, uh, this type of logic, that has to do with tracking your sales emails. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, uh, let me know in the comments section. Great work, Alex. Thanks again for sharing. I just love how simple it is and yet it opens up so many opportunities. Love it. And now, time to reveal the number one, the winner of the HubSpot Top 5 for November 2022 with a video that honestly when I saw it, it just made me sit down and go, whoa. This is the most powerful 90 seconds of HubSpot Opsomeness you're apt to find anywhere on the web today. And I'm so excited to introduce you, Ryan Gunn doing incredible things with essentially A-B testing workflows. Ryan, take it away. Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to show off something I'm working on for a client. Um, so this is an A-B test of send cadence. Uh, currently A-B testing, you can't A-B test a workflow. You can A-B test emails within a workflow. Um, but this client wants to test uh, various different things that happen during the flow. In this case, it's the send cadence. So do we send an email every seven days? Do we send an email every two days? What's the difference in performance between these two? The emails themselves are exactly the same. Um, so what I did here is I created a new property called AB test random number. Um, so to set that up, just created a, a number field set a minimum value limit of one, a max of two, and made sure that it has to be an integer. And then at the start of this workflow, I'm clearing that property and I'm using ops hub format data to generate a random number. So here's how you do that. If you go down here to format data, um, you're going to actually go to custom mode Use a function, random number, and you, you can set one for the minimum, two for the maximum. And then you wanna make sure this is checked. That's gonna save the value into the property. Um, and then when you hit save, you can choose the property. So that's what I've done here. Uh, this will generate a random number between one and two. This will copy that value into that new AB test random number property. And then we can do an if then branch based on whether the contact has one or two in that property. Um, so now everybody in here will get, uh, if they have a one, they'll get this first cadence of seven days delay between each email. And if they have a two, they will get a two day delay between each email. And then we can look to see which cadence performs better. Awesome work, Ryan, and everyone, that's our show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please submit your HubSpot brilliance to the HubSpot Top 5 so I can feature you in a future video. Till then, see you around.